last video, we talked about the history of wolves and coyotes in the United States, and how our understanding about them changes with new science and research. We went into a lot of detail, and it's super exciting stuff, so if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you go watch it now. But if you're still here, we're about to get into some pretty graphic material. That's right, electrical supplies! But no, seriously, if blood and skinning isn't your thing, now is time to click away. You met Tom Noski in our other video. He's an assistant collections manager and taxidermist here at the Field Museum, and a few months ago he invited me to help him skin both a coyote and a wolf so I would be able to see the similarities and differences between the two up close. We'll switch between them in the video, so watch for the little coyote and wolf icons. These specimens legally came to us from a state wildlife management agency, so so no, we did not kill them. We we're preparing them to be housed in our research collection. We don't use gloves during the prep process because it's easier to get a handle on the material and feel what you're doing, and with gloves it's pretty slippery, and the risk of cutting yourself is actually greater. The sawdust is just for soaking up blood. And we needed an extra set of hands, so we enlisted the help of Kaylee Kufner. She's a collections assistant and works in the bird division, and is also a super skilled taxidermist. So let's start with the coyote. Then you can see that interface of the fascia. And because you're putting pressure on it, it just peels it off. Cool. And then when you get down to the toes, we're going to go down to this last digit, mm -hmm. and and then from the inside, we're going to cut through the cartilage there so that the so that less claw that stays last in it. finger yeah. bone. Mm -hmm. I don't think people think about that a lot, like how our uh, fingernails are attached on our last digit here. So when you want to declaw a cat or an animal, you're cutting that off, and so you're kind of leaving them with shortened fingers. Little nubs. Yeah, little nubs. On your side. Okay. And, and then on Kaylee's side, maybe I can actually help. With that while she's you don't think about all of these connections you know it's all just like pulley and lever systems mm -hmm. made out of squishy biological material yeah that, whoa there you go do you guys see these little bones that i was talking about they're like they're embedded within the tissue they're not really articulated with anything but they fit on top of the ridges of the digit bones and it's really well lubricated and it helps with that uh, efficiency. So they go boo, boo, that's a scientific sound effect. We're on our way to the butt. <laughs> you don't need to keep the butthole intact. <laughs> this is a serious question. Is it a diagnostic feature for anything? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, could, I can't anymore. answer that. I don't, I don't know think so, specifically but specifically studying butts. But well, I was, but I was thinking, okay, like, like anal glands, you know, yeah, like yeah. other ways I'm, that, that animals communicate and anal glands and right. secretions is a big part of that. And so maybe somebody would need to know the circumference of the butthole. <laughs> I'm just not <laughs> ruling anything out here. Keeping an open mind. Open yeah, mind no, and it's a good, every question is a good question. Back in Montana, when we skinned that wolf, we didn't really know what we were going to use the pelt for, but we knew we wanted to uh, keep the pelt. And this is different because you're not making any kind of direct cut. It's not like you're bisecting it or splitting it in half, but instead we're able to make a few more minor cuts on the outside, like along the back of the legs and the back of the tail, and then essentially invert it, like pull it off of the rest of the body without having to make a split down the midline or down the back. Um, and the reason that I'm doing the face while Tom is working on the legs is because by the time you would get all of the skin off down toward the face, the face has so many uh, particular delicate details that you really want to keep intact, like the eyelids and the tear ducts and the ears and the lips. And if all of that skin is just hanging down and you're essentially looking up into an inverted skin of a mammal, you're not able to see what you're doing. And it's actually a lot easier and it's more efficient. So. When we were in Montana, it took us the better part of eight hours to skin a single wolf. Tom, is it safe to say you could do this kind of process with most large predators, like large, a big cat or a lion or a tiger or something like that, or a hyena, anything kind of of that size with that sort of head? It doesn't have antlers or horns. You could just do a case skin in a similar way? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, oops, he's bleeding. I need a bucket. And it is okay if it bleeds on the floor. Okay. Just as long as it doesn't get all over your shoes. You know, there's times on the train, I'm going home at night when I've done wolves all day. Oh, and yeah. You end up, you smell like, like that dog. horrible smell. Yeah. And then you can tell people are looking around and like, like, what is that? What is that? That's going to be me today. 
on the train on the way home <laughs> with blood on my shoes and probably like crusty bloody hands or something. Someone, I'm gonna, someone's gonna think I murdered somebody. You can see here exactly where lips are connected to the jawbone. You can even see where that blood vessel's coming through out of what, uh, a foramen right here, which is a little hole in the bone. Cut that off. You have to go really slow along the face because there's, uh, not a lot of margin of error. There is no, uh, there's not a lot of muscle between the bone and the skin. And so you wanna make sure that you cut just parallel to the bone in order to remove all of that skin. This is a pretty crazy visual. Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's the best. Am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I guess now you can just. Wow. I'm always surprised and amazed by how uh, intuitive it seems. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like it just, the anatomy gives you a roadmap for where to go. Mm -hmm. It could also be that it's genetically hardwired into your genome to yeah. know this, because at some point, everybody, every one of your ancestors at some point was doing this, right? And I think that's what I what I like about doing this on the brain scoop is that it is so uh, counterintuitive to to what people think. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's something that it is a novelty now. It is something that happens only in the confines of museums and research institutions and for hunters and uh, that type of thing. I like I don't even think about the fact that I'm practically kissing this thing right here. It's like oh hello. What yeah. a visual. And then just its face comes out. I made that special effect noise, so it didn't actually, it doesn't sound like that. But that is wild. You can just see how everything lines up and then the layers beneath. That looks diabolical. Yeah. And you can even feel the back of the skull right here, that sagittal crest where all of these muscles are attaching to it. And you, can, you can feel it on the back of, well, you don't have one. You can feel it on your dog's head. Because when I first started doing this, I remember being so fascinated by uh, the process and removing the skin and seeing what's underneath. And I remember I went home that day and didn't want to talk about it mm -hmm. because I thought if I did, I'd sound crazy. Like mm -hmm. I, I thought if, if I was seen as enjoying mm -hmm. uh, this kind of natural exploration of mm -hmm. anatomy or whatever, that, that it would be seen really negatively or like indicative of like what a serial killer would enjoy mm -hmm. or something. And then I realized I just liked natural history and there's, yeah. there's nothing uh, demonic about it. Right. We're gonna uh, string this rope through the back of its Achilles tendons and then we're gonna hang it up in order to take advantage of gravity in pulling down the rest of the skin since we've already got it started on this back end and then it's just gonna be going around and around, removing its skin. Is that good? Perfect. Okay, wow. Excellent. I've got its testes in my face. <laughs> wow, do you guys smell that? Jeez, what is that? Just its musk or? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> it smells like a, it smells skunky-like, mm -hmm. but, but almost like with a urine smell. Yeah. And like, I don't know, it's got a spicy sort of aroma. Oh my God, not gonna be easy. Okay, let's get uh, I should have taken a, a chip class where they teach you how to dine. I should have been in the Boy yeah, Scouts. Slips oh no. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fine. Is that gonna be okay? Yeah. Oh wow. Good. Ooh. Ooh. I need to do some upper body. Wow, this is a great view. So we're gonna just cut, you're gonna cut around this here. Oh, I All see, right, yeah. okay. So cut underneath the baculum. Yeah. Which our viewers know is the penis bone. No. There we All go. All right. Ah, he's free.
seems like a really weird game show competition. <laughs> <laughs> Who can skin the canid the fastest? Well, I've got like 70 of them. I think that's a great idea. We should Oh yeah, have a pizza do it. party and <laughs> yeah. Come on out, people. Break the record time. Look at look at this gaping cavity. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you see that? Whoa. Like that's a... just a massive hole. Whoops. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh I'm sorry. He <laughs> hit me. <laughs> so here we have it. We have our coyote and we have our timber wolf. And what I really like about this is that we don't know. We don't know how they're gonna be used. We don't know uh, if coyotes and wolves will be extirpated from the United States. We don't know what the populations are gonna look like uh, 50 or 100 years from now, but they'll have this information, uh, future scientists, to learn about what they were doing now, today, at this point in time. Thanks, museums. It still has brains on it.